I didn't like organized religion, but I believed that there was a God. Just not the way that they were explaining it. It didn't make any sense to me. As a kid, man, they are telling me like I'm eating like the flesh of Christ and his blood, and I'm like, whoa. I didn't really understand the difference between like what a Baptist church was or, or any of those things. You know, speaking in tongues, falling over, passing out, man. And when that happened, I didn't feel like anybody was, I don't want to say the wrong things, but it didn't seem like anyone was talking to God to me. It sounded like something a lot darker than that. So... October 7th that happened. Now I'm getting videos in my feed, like, then I'm really watching the debate videos of, like, um, Sheikh Uthman between people and other debates, and then, like, <laughs> it just became so clear to me that this was the truth. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good afternoon, brother. Good afternoon. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing all right, man. How are you? Well, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I can't complain. Alhamdulillah. So, yeah. Introduce yourself and tell the people where you're from. Uh, Muhammad Sharif. i um, from Watertown, New York. I grew up uh, with a single mom. My dad wasn't around. Wasn't really any religion in my house growing up. Fast forward. I'm going to this school. We got to wear uniforms and stuff. But I didn't know that it was a Catholic school. You know what I mean? I had no idea. Uh, so that was kind of my first, like taste of like organized religion because uh they kind of talk more about the bible than general education at this place like on wednesdays we would go across the street to this church and we'd have like the the communion or whatever <laughs> that kind of scared me as a kid man they're telling me like i'm eating like the flesh of christ and his blood and i'm yeah, like whoa yeah, yeah. Yeah. so you know I went there the whole school year. I didn't like it. You know, I mean, my favorite days were the days that I could, we had dress down days. You yeah, know, yeah. you could wear whatever you wanted. Those were my favorite days. But um, after that school year, I told my mom I didn't want to go back to that school. So I went back to public school and like fast forward, probably 11, 12 years old. I had these next door neighbors. They're really nice people. And they're like a Christian family. I'd play with their kids all the time, you know, go jump on the trampolines. They're a lot of them my friends. They invited me to church one time with them. This was like um, called like Calvary Baptist Church, but it was like a Christian church. What I, I didn't really understand the difference between like what a Baptist church was or, or any of those things. You know, Cause like when I go, I didn't like understand what they were saying, like some of the stuff that they were saying like didn't make sense like how there's pictures of like jesus on the wall you know he's white but in the bible it doesn't describe him that way at all so like a lot of these things just didn't make sense to me so like kind of really stopped going i didn't like organized religion but i believe that there was a god just not the way that they were explaining it, it didn't make any sense to me so um i don't know after that i kind of just like started living my own life the way that I wanted to and just kind of on my own terms, you know, not really as an atheist, but like as like, oh, God knows like my situation. He knows like what I was given and this is why I act this way. Kind of, you know, making excuses, you know what I mean? So I like, I started doing things in the streets. I joined a gang when I was 15 years old. All the things I knew in my heart were wrong. I didn't even know why I was doing them. It got to a point where it was so bad that like, I remember at 16 years old, I felt like I needed to go to jail. Like, not, not even to be punished, but, like, I needed to, like, prove something. Man, I tell you, the first time I went to jail, I changed my mind about that very real quick. <laughs> I have this older brother. We have the same dad, different moms. And I met him, like, online on MySpace. And I wanted to go visit him. And he was doing all the street stuff. I thought, it was, I thought it was cool, you know what I mean? So I went and stayed with him for a while, like, on a vacation. I ended up, like, begging my mom to go let me live there, which I don't know why she let me. I have no idea. Like, <laughs> no idea. She let me go live with him. He was only a couple years older than me. But that that's where it kind of went downhill. Like, it it got to a point where he got in so much trouble that he got like kicked out of the county that that he lived that we were living in. So we had to go move with his adopted mom in Kentucky. And she was like a church going woman. And she would she she wanted us to go to church, she kept saying, Come on, go, go, go. And then finally we went, man, this was like uh different church than anything I ever been to, man. They were speaking in tongues, falling over, passing out, man. And when that happened, I didn't feel like anybody was, I don't want to say the wrong things, but it didn't seem like anyone was talking to God to me. It sounded like something a lot darker than that. It, it terrified me. Yeah. So even like when I was in church doing, you know, witness, I seen that stuff and I'm just like, ah, oh, this is crazy. Yeah, man. So yeah, I, I could relate to that. That yeah, it, it definitely was pushed you away from that situation. Yeah. So when I tell you, I've never went back to a church ever since then. There's been like a lot of things happening in my life where I felt like lost and like I really need something. Is that kind of what um, led you to 
uh, research in Islam? A few things, but yeah, that, that's one of the main things. I've been on like this path lately for just the truth. I've been trying to understand like the whole meaning of everything. So my first taste of Islam, I had a, a friend that I met at work. Um, he uh, he came here from Louisiana and he, um, long story short, he ended, up, he ended up homeless and had nowhere to go. So I let him come stay in my house for a while, for about a month, showed him like how to get a place and everything, but he was, he was Muslim. And he was just kind of like telling me, like I just was quite having questions, you know what I mean? Like he, I remember around Ramadan, he was telling me, oh, it's Ramadan. I'm like, oh, what, what, what's that mean? Like at first I thought he was joking, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what, so he kind of explained it to me and things like, so like I would just ask him a few questions here and there, but like nothing that made me like believe it. So October 7th, obviously, that happened. It was kind of like my first real taste of Islam. I'm watching these videos and I'm seeing the way that these people are reacting to what's happening to them. I'm talking about Palestine, obviously. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're not like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, they're not how, if, if something like that happened here, it would not, these people would not be acting like this. Like, you know, they'd run and they'd be, I don't know how to explain it, but like when, 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 it, when they see like someone die in front of them and they say Allahu Akbar, you know, like that, that's crazy to me when they're not normally in, in that situation, you'd be asking why, like, why, how, how can there be a God? I wanted to know why, how, why do these people believe in this so much that like, even in a situation like this, that they still believe that there's a God. And like, now I'm getting videos in my feed, like of people talking about it just more and more. And I'm going down the rabbit hole and then I'm seeing videos of Sheikh Uthman and Muhammad Hijab, people like that. And I'm just watching their videos, listen to them talk. Then I'm really watching the debate videos of like, um, Sheikh Uthman between people and other debates. And then like, like <laughs> it just became so clear to me that this was the truth. So I started reading the Quran myself. I mean, the fact that it's carbon dated back to 1400 years ago, the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that was almost enough for me right there. But then just everything, the miracles, the predictions, you know, the fact that he was, he couldn't read or write and he got these revelations over 23 years and didn't contradict himself one time. I'll probably contradict myself in this, in this podcast a couple of times, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So to not do that over 23 yeah. years makes absolutely no sense. So, um, for a while, I was just like, okay, I'm Muslim, but like, how do I actually become Muslim? Like, I knew this in my heart, so I'm doing research, and I have a, I have a friend, a brother that is Muslim. He just kept telling me, you gotta, you gotta take your shahada, you gotta take your shahada, bro. And I'm like, well, I kind of did. I said it in my head, you know what I mean? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, but you gotta, you gotta say it in front of some witnesses. So he was looking up uh, masjids around where I'm at, and um. There's one 15 minutes away from me, but there must be a real small Muslim community where I live at. Cause first off, I don't know any, I've never talked to any, don't really see any. And um, I went, I went there. So he's like, just go there. I went there after work. Um, it was probably like 5.30, doors were locked. Nobody was there. I call, it's like this magic jack is not available at this time. I'm like, man, what's going on? So then I start doing like some more research in the Google reviews that says they're only open during Juma. So the Friday prayer. Now I work so far away from home that I can't just go on lunch break because it would take me two hours. So it didn't seem like that was possible for me. And then um, I found the closest next one was the Utica Masjid, which is about an hour and 45 minutes from me. And it was funny because I didn't know at the time that half of the videos I've been watching were, Im were Imam Tom. Mashallah. I had no idea that, that he was the Imam at this Masjid. I just wanted to go to the closest one, you yeah, know? Yeah. So that was, that was just, that was wild to me, alhamdulillah. So before I even got a response to say, hey, this is when you can come do it. I, I, I just, on Saturday, I just drove out here. Nobody was at the masjid. I went to the door, I walked inside. I took my shoes off, walked inside, didn't see anybody. I opened the door, I said, assalamu alaikum. You know, just see if anybody was there. <laughs> didn't, didn't hear anybody, right? So alhamdulillah, as I'm walking out the door, I see a brother pulling in. And I was real nervous to talk to him. I just—I don't know. I was just scared, or I don't know. I didn't want to say the wrong things because I just wanted to be some, people to know that I'm sincere, you know. Um, so I said, "Hey, I, I want to take my shahada. Um, I just—I really wanted to come here and talk to talk to somebody so I could take my shahada." And um, he goes, uh, "Come back in about 45 minutes. There will be someone here." So uh, I had to get something to eat real quick. And alhamdulillah, I get an email back from CFOT. <laughs> he says, hey, brother, sorry it's been taking so long. Uh, when do you think you can make it out here? And I'm like, well, I'm out here already. We out here. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, man. This is like, I can't, I can't make this up, you know. So he's like, all right, all right, brother Ibrahim's going to meet you. Go ahead. And so, you know, I 
went went there, took my shahad, and that was that was it. The brothers, there was, I don't remember the brothers' names that were there except yours so far, but all the brothers there embraced me. These were brothers of all different types of ethnicities, like, and that was the most beautiful thing to me. It's like nobody looked at me for anything, and this is what I felt like. Now, now that I'm Muslim, I felt like this is my identity. I got, I felt like I've been searching for an identity, and the especially. I'm half black, half white, man. I'm the way that I was raised, man. I'm not black enough for you, and I'm I'm too dark for the white people. I'm not. I didn't fit in anywhere, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. So identity was a real struggle for me. So like now that I'm Muslim and I see the the embracement I get from all different types of people, it's just it's amazing to me. What was the reaction of your family? My mom, she's she's very open minded. I asked her. Um, I said, if I gave you a Quran, would you read it? Yeah. Um. I asked my brother, I said, what if I told you that that I believe in Jesus, but just as a messenger of God and not God himself, and that I worship one God? And he was like, well, that actually makes sense to me. So slowly, you know, things like that, I, I, These my family is open-minded. Um, my wife, on the other hand, she doesn't understand it. So alhamdulillah, inshallah, one day um, she'll understand a little bit more. Inshallah. So where do you see yourself in the next five years or so? Uh, that's a hard question. Um, I'd like to see myself fully practicing on my dean, doing something to better the people around me, the community. I don't, I don't want to, I, I feel like I'm getting too ambitious, so I don't want to say too much, but I want to like learn Islam fully. Like I would like to, I'm at the, like, I'm thinking about like taking Islamic studies and things like that. Cause I want to learn, I want to understand a hundred percent. Like I, as much as I can. Uh, inshallah, me and my wife, me, her, all my kids, Muslim. Um, that's the only thing I could think of right now that that's that's the ideal picture five years from now. But uh, inshallah, we'll see. May Allah make that so. I mean. I mean.